All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the tenth session of Tokyo Red. For the uninitiated, Tokyo Red is a continuing cyberpunk red campaign set in Tokyo as opposed to Night City. Otherwise, it's the same setting and universe as the anticipated 2077 video game, and, well, I guess now the current 2020 tabletop role-playing game. Uh, just, you know, Tokyo Red is in 2050. Uh, we've already had, as you probably can tell, uh, nine successful sessions. And if you want to catch the VODs for those, all of them are available on my YouTube and other podcast solutions. Uh, we'll get into today's session in a little bit, but I have two quick items of home, of housekeeping to handle before we dive in. Uh, the first is, unfortunately, uh, the new player we brought in last week, uh, Pinkett. Uh, they are unable to continue with the stream, so there will be a little bit of retconning involved with their character. Um, but they sort of have an open invitation to come back whenever their connection stabilizes. Um, the other sort of bit of shilling I have to do is that uh, whatever support you can provide for the stream, whether it's a follow, sub, patron, donation, whatever, I'll you know all of it is greatly appreciated. Just make sure to take care of yourselves first. And with that out of the way, we're just going to go ahead and dive into our tenth session. Now, where we last left off, the Edge Runners were tasked with tracking down and acquiring a stolen Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department server. And this server was supposedly being sold by a mysterious figure known as the quote-unquote auctioneer. And they have found out where the auctioneer is holding his auction, and that has led them to the following penthouse, which I will put everyone on this map. So, uh, feel free to zoom out. I will do so for the stream here momentarily. But it's a uh, fairly expansive uh, sort of penthouse where, um, you know, you get a great view of the city. Uh, you are more or less being able to uh, see out into the night air uh, unobstructed. Uh, there's such accoutrements as uh, an onsen, an osen tub. I butcher my own words. Uh, there's all sorts of hors d'oeuvres and other sort of... Um, you know, hosting trappings, I would say. Basically, it's a party and there's things to do at said party. Now, if my understanding was correct, uh, Xavier and Airbags, uh, you are over by where Glyph has set up their um, their sort of uh, entertainment for the evening. Uh, Akari, you had just gone down to acquire more hors d'oeuvres because you're masquerading as a servant. And then, Steel, you had sequestered yourself into a bathroom that was available. Um, did I get that right for everybody? I headed back towards the fourth set up afterwards. So like... uh, run that by me again? I headed back towards where Glyph was set up afterwards. Okay. So you're not in the bathroom anymore, you're just sort of heading back on that way. And for those who maybe can't see this, the uh, current stream map, I'll give a little bit more of a description here. So the penthouse is divided into two distinct sections. Uh, the first is what you might expect. Uh, it's an expansive living slash dining room with a bunch of kitchens, uh, bedrooms with en suites, um, sort of a living area. And then there is a very large patio slash terrace where most of the socializing is taking place. And there are security personnel stationed at regular intervals, uh, pretty much centered on the terrace. But there's also a few back in the living area that are, you know, keeping guests from, like, hiding off in a bedroom somewhere. Um, most particular about these security individuals is that they are suited individuals, uh, you know, standard black suit, black tie, white undersh undershirt, um, but they are also all visibly carrying weapons, which as a reminder, uh, in Tokyo and really in Japan in general, uh, firearms aren't really allowed by the general populace. So the fact that they are open carrying what appear to be uh, medium SMGs should really speak to the level of control that the auctioneer has over the current circumstances. But uh, that is where we're going to drop you guys in. You are, uh, as I said, at your various positions. So where would you like to start? 
Uh, if I remember so, correctly, we're still like twenty, like ten minutes into like the half hour window of bidding for the uh, the server case. That is correct, and thank you because I know I was forgetting something. So the one thing that I forgot to mention was the auction for the server is a silent auction, and the players and really anyone who's interested in bidding has about thirty minutes to get their bid in. And I would say you're about five, ten minutes into that thirty-minute window. Uh, what's the activity like on the silent bidding, or how are they doing it? Are they doing it through agents? Yes, or? they are seemingly connecting to a program on their agents. Okay. So what I'd like. To and if I recall correctly, while I was down at the kitchen, I noticed one of the offices in the back also had these goons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then what... And refresh my memory on names. There was um, a chap that Glyph met with uh, the... I guess one of the upper management of the hotel. Was his name like Humi or something like that? I don't think we actually gave him a sticking name, um, but we can make one up if you would prefer. Okay. Not, um, don't need it immediately. I will, on my way to the off uh, elevator with my next load of snacks, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a quick uh, detour to the uh, secluded office and quickly offer the guards um, something from the tray, just saying compliments of the house. Okay. And, you know, one of, the, one of the guards does sort of, you know, the, the two or three guards sort of share a look, and one of them does say, well, thank you, and uh, does pick up a little bit of finger food. But the other two remain, quote-unquote, stoic. They don't really, um, you know, go for what you're selling. Fair. That's fine. I just wanted to plant the seed in their minds. Maybe next time they'll be hungrier. And then I will give them a polite smile and bow in the traditional Japanese way while, of course, not knocking the tray off, and head back up the elevator. Okay. As for Xavier and airbags, uh, you do see Steel sort of working their way through the crowd towards you, but what are you two up to? Um, <clears throat> I think for now, just, like, doing the best to pretend to be roadies for Glyph. All right. Right. Making sure everything's working, but also keeping an open eye on things. Okay. Uh, why don't we have both of you roll me a... Let's have you roll... Yeah, I think I'm just going to have you roll a perception here. I was thinking tracking, but I think perception works best. All right, so a 16 for airbags and a 20 for Xavier. So airbags, you're going to notice this a little bit after Xavier does, but you both more or less recognize the same thing. There is a woman talking to the auctioneer, and the auctioneer himself kind of stands out from the crowd because he's got on a immaculate-looking tuxedo, um, as well as a bit of gray in his hair. But he also doesn't look Japanese. He definitely looks like he is from the quote-unquote East, or is it the West? I never remember which it is. Either way, he doesn't, he doesn't look like a normal Japanese individual. Um, as for the woman, though, she definitely looks Japanese, very high class. She has on a stylized yukata that is uh, embroidered with all sorts of gold finery. And you, don't, you can't really overhear with their conversation, but you can tell that they're having a very lively one. And I would say that based on that 20, um, what you notice is that people are giving this woman a very wide berth for some reason. Mm. I look at airbags. Should I go poke some questions? I mean, if you think you can get away with it, sure. I mean, we don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. It's worth a shot. I'm going to walk over and try to create some small talk. Okay. So you kind of roll up to them uh, mid-conversation, and the auctioneer is just getting done with saying, and that is where I will be next week. Oh, hello. Uh, you're one of the uh, entertainment individuals, yes? 
Indeed. I was coming over to see if you, uh, either of you would like to request anything. And the auctioneer sort of shrugs and looks to the woman, and the woman kind of laughs to herself and says, Well, uh, I do have a, a small request, if it's not too much of an inconvenience. Request away. There's a American song that I'm quite fond of. Uh, Burning Down the House, I believe it is. I'll have to go see if it's in the repertoire, but I will see what I can do to get it up next. Hmm. And she kind of does that thing where she hides her mouth with one of those paper fans. And she says, I would appreciate that greatly. Thank you. Indeed. Is there anything else I can do for you? I can uh, suggest more entertainment or possibly get other things uh, that you wish. And uh, the auctioneer is picking up what you're putting down and kind of clears his throat. He goes, <clears throat> ah, maybe introductions are in order. Uh, sorry, I don't think I've ever gotten your name. And he's looking at you, Xavier. My name is Xavier. Ah, well, Xavier, uh, you are in the distinct honor and privilege in being in the same presence as Miss Sun. And I'll put her name on the nameplate so you can see it. Having the local expert background, would I immediate, that name immediately trigger? A roll, uh, yes. All right. Uh, local expert roll? Yes, and I'm going to give you a plus three on this one, but you don't need it because you already rolled a 22. Um, with a 22, uh, 25 after the plus three, yeah, you know who this is. Uh, Miss Sun, uh, or Saria Sun, if you were to use the Western form of the name. Um, she is the wife of one of the major finance players in Tokyo. As in, there's probably nothing that goes on in the banking world that either she or her husband don't know about. So she is a tremendously important person. I just look at her and bow. The honor is mine. Hmm. Well, it's uh, a bit stuffy in here, don't you think? I could say that. Hmm. Well, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I have other people to meet and greet. And she kind of smiles, gives you, gives you sort of a slight head bow. And, you know, she walks over to talk with a group over near to the edge of the terrace. Uh, and the moment she's out of earshot, the auctioneer visibly sort of relaxes and says, Oof, always feels like walking on a minefield when I talk with that one. I just looked at the auctioneer. She seems extremely pleasant. You haven't seen her angry. Trust me, uh, I've seen her angry. That's fair. Well, I better go see if we can, if we can get burning down the house on there so we don't see that side of her. That would be prudent, I feel. And I turn and walk back over towards uh, airbags and where Glyph is set up. All right. So, Steel, at this point, you could, of course, arrive with the others, but is there anything you want to accomplish? Um, besides just looking around, see if I can't find a more in, uh, inconspicuous spot to check in besides the area that I know is over by Glyph. Okay. So if uh, you were to look at the overall layout of the terrace, uh, there is, I don't want to call it an alleyway, but there is sort of a gap between uh, where there's a staircase up to a second level of the terrace and the actual rest of the penthouse. There's sort of a gap where um, bits of pipe, bits of conduit uh, all run. You could conceivably squeeze back there. Um, but you don't know if there's an access point back there. And it would also involve uh, distracting at least one security member that's sort of looking at either end of that uh, open sort of area. And for reference, I'm specifically talking... I don't know if this is going to show up for stream or not, but I'm specifically looking at this area here. Ooh, yep, that does show up. Mm 
No, did we lose steel? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll make my way back to the group for now. Okay. It's about this time that Akari, you arrive at the penthouse floor with your tray in hand. And uh, what uh, what are you doing while the others are regrouping? Um, I will be deliver. I'm going to be making a uh, pass through the main floor area. Okay. I'm heading, you know, delivering hors d'oeuvres to people that want them. Um, I'm going to make a point of checking, of uh, ensuring that the auctioneer gets the choice um, hors d'oeuvres. And then I'm going to make my way over to the band to make sure that they're properly fed. Alrighty. So all of you group up and have a chance to talk amongst yourselves, uh, probably without anyone really paying attention to you. So you've got at least a moment. Alright. So I imagine Xavier sort of brings us up speed on uh, who that was. Yeah, I'll, I'll share all the information that I've gotten as well as trying to get Glyph to do Burning Down the House. I'm going to take note that everyone seems to be doing their bids through the agent. Um, would it be possible to sabotage or at least figure out who the winning bid might be? As I, you know, looking at the amount of individuals up here, I don't think we can take them in a straight fight. And with the amount of power and influence here i don't think we want to even if that's, we survive we'd make a lot of enemies that's the bigger worry most of the people up here won't be for a fight yeah but they all know people who could exactly uh there are four security officers on the terrace and i saw another two in the uh penthouse itself yeah there's three downstairs guarding an office for some reason maybe that's where they're keeping the server Mm, potentially. Uh, I think you have, um, uh, basically, once we get to about 10 minutes to go for the close of the auction, um, airbags will sort of bring up his agent, call the purple tiger guy on standby, and go, okay, we're beginning to wrap up here. Bring the liver around the back. Of course, the purple tiger guy is more than willing to do as you ask. I'm going to quickly look at um, Steel. Just Steel, do you have any idea who might be winning this thing yet? I mean, there's a lot of rich people up here, so it could be anyone, really. All right. Personally, I think my money would be on Sierra Sun over there. Yeah. The question then becomes, what could somebody that high up in the banking world want with the information on that hard drive I have a plan to get into the system um, I'll point out the security guard up here and like if somebody can distract him I can slip into the service alley oh. I can do that of course that'll if I distract him, I will probably be damaged goods and can't get back up here. Mm. <clears throat> uh, uh, so being subtle isn't exactly a bag is a strong point, so it does also sound like our best bet would probably just be to deal with the three downstairs in the server room down there, assuming that it is down there. Well, I mean, my current outfit doesn't uh, doesn't allow for a my heavy ordnance, but I would manage to slip my pistol into the small of the back here. No one ever checks the uniforms of the uh, help. Yeah, no, not generally. No. Well, you guys tell me what's the play here. I mean, am I able to just uh, jack into the system 
out here where Glyph is set up? You could, yeah. Uh, would just be a simple interface uh, check to do so. But just be aware that if you start net running more than just jacking in, uh, people will probably notice. Yeah, I'm like I'll be doing my best to guise it as if I'm just like, helping maintain the system and shit. Okay. Go ahead and roll me uh, your interface check, please. Just flat interface. Mm-hmm. A 14. Uh, good news, bad news. Uh, good news, you actually are able to get a ping back from a connection in the service alley. Bad news, uh, the current interface that Glyph is using, uh, in order for you to use it, you would have to remove Glyph, which would probably kill the, the uh, entertainment that she is providing. Sadly, it is. If somebody can distract that guard, or we can all just leave and go downstairs and deal with that. I, I mean, can't think of a way to distract the guard. Is the thing. The only thing I could do is spill our d'oeuvres on him, and then they kick me out. And I mean, probably take me out back and beat me with a hose. Could always trip over a wire. Mm. You could. I mean, the main thing is you just need him looking at someone else while you slip in, right? I mean, on, ooh, on the words of slip in, I have an interesting idea. Uh, the onsen tub, is mm -hmm. that open to the floor? It is, yes. Okay. Um, ex uh, Xavier, I'm yeah. going to need you to start yelling at me. Um, and I'm oh, going to move over here, and I'm going to accidentally trip over some cables and spill half my hors d'oeuvre tray all over your shirt. I'll move I just look down here and bit. start yelling obscene things like, you're clumsy, how did you get this job, all of that fun stuff. I'm going to bow repeatedly, say sorry, 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 make an instinctual uh, step back to give him some space, trip and fall into the tub. Let's... And then I'm going to loud, get out a very loud shriek out of surprise and, you know, dismay. I'm trying to figure out what to make this a test of. Um... Performance? Performance isn't a skill, though. Otherwise, I would say yes. Uh, let's see. How would you feel about... A persuasion, because you're trying to sell this, and I will give you a plus four on your roll, since I think it's a good plan. Sounds good to me. Uh, so roll persuasion. Oof, only four, uh, 14 to that. Okay. So that's 14 total. Would you like to use luck, or you want to stick with the 14? Yeah. I think I'll dump uh, three points of luck to bring it to 17. Okay. In that case, uh, of course, you get the attention of pretty much everyone in the immediate area, including the security officer that was hiding in the corner. And he, of course, comes up uh, and begins trying to fish you out of the tub. Um, there's also sort of whispering going on, like, who is that girl? Why is she here? Why, you know, why is the help so incompetent? Yada, yada, yada. Um, but this, this, in. yeah, this does leave the opening for Steel. So, yeah, Steel, if you want to slip in to the service alley, that is going to require a stealth check, please. Uh, Airbags will try to help sell by sort of going, whoa, whoa, cool, cool. And I will put, mm, I'm just going to keep yelling. Mm, I'll put three points of luck into that for 17 as well. All right, so Steel with a 17 uh, stealth, you are indeed able to get into the service corridor doesn't seem anyone seems to have noticed you it is the end is it like an entryway here that you can see through her yes or? uh it's partially obscured by uh some bits of of not rebar but sort of almost like a steel gate um but you're able to slip past and in, into sort of the secluded spot no problem 
And is this also an opening, or is this a like, closed wall? Ah, uh, that is a closed wall. Okay. Um, where can I find the... Like, where is the actual point where I can jack into this? Is Literally right below you on the map, so maybe about five feet away, or maybe even a meter. Okay. But not in the surface yard itself? Not in the surface yard itself, correct. Yeah. Um, I'll try and do my best to hide here and do what I can quick. Okay. Go ahead and roll me another interface, please. Fourteen. Uh, yeah, you're able to find the connection terminal, no problem. Uh, are you going to jack in or no? Let me remind myself of what the what programs do. I can activate them before I jack in, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes. And we'll activate speedy. And yeah, let's let's do speedy and flak. Okay. So you jack in, you are confirming there is a connection with the system. However, you would need to do a, a what is it, a Pathfinder uh, check yep. to see if there's anything further. A 13. So what you find yeah. is that, probably understandably, the penthouse is on its own separate system from the rest of the hotel. And you're only seeing that there's... Uh, at least on this initial level, um, there is like security control for like the bedrooms. So you could like mess with the access to the bedrooms. Um, but to the actual penthouse itself and to whatever system the uh, silent auction is being run on, that you don't have access to. Um, you also only know that there's at least two levels because on the next level, there is a rather beefy password blocking your further progress. Um, I'll go down a level and I'll give a crack at the password. Alright. And while you're doing that, we cut back to the rest of the group. At this point, Akar, you have been fished out of the tub by the security officer. And uh, he's kind of put a hand to his ear and is starting to ask someone to come over and escort you out. That's... Uh... Um, I look at him and go, and I go... I just nod and say... I'm sorry, I will immediately remove myself, and with that I will start a the path of shame back to the elevator. Okay. And a I different security down. guard does meet you, like, halfway to the elevator, and make sure that you get where you're going. Understandable. Okay. So Kari goes back down the elevator. Uh, Xavier and Airbags, what are you up to now that all that has transpired? I'm at least going to take off my coat and put it to the side since it's now covered in hors d'oeuvres. Okay. I'm not actually sure what we can do without drawing attention to ourselves. Other than walking the route and taking more requests. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think we just need to like stay put until we get a signal from the Hacker, hacker people that they've they're making a move on the server. All right. Well, I guess that goes to Steel then. So Steel, uh, as I said, there is a very beefy password on your current net running elevator. Yeah. What was the uh, stuff with the bedroom though? Like, I can fiddle with the doors to their oh. yeah there's a control node on the first level that would let you mess with the access of the bedrooms as in like lock the doors yeah i mean imagine like a standard hotel key card type system okay. you have access to something like that I don't think anyone's in there currently, at least not that I've seen. So I'll just cause a little chaos and lock it, I guess. Okay. Takes but an action to do so. 
and I'll go down for the password. All right, it's going to be a. Uh, I believe that is a. Uh, what is it? Backdoor. Backdoor. That's what it's called. Fifteen. Uh, are you dumping luck into it, or are you keeping the fifteen? Up the two to get to the seven. So you Seventeen will be enough. You are indeed able to crack the password, and what you see on the second level is good news, bad news. Good news, uh, there does appear to be a control node, though for what you're not sure. Bad news is that between you and that control node, there is a hellhound. Hasn't locked onto you yet, but there is a hellhound. One second, just reminding myself of how did that. It's been a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basically, everything is a uh, your interface role. Uh, you just need to tell me whether you uh, are like sliding between levels or if you're breaking a password, things like that. Um, I believe it's on page 31 of the Jumpstart PDF. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'll just... Uh, hmm. To fight the Hellhound, if you're running from the Hell... Probably should run it, but uh, I'll try and fiddle... I don't know, I don't even know what the control mode is, so I'll just go down use slide if I have to to the whatever floor is if there is a floor I'm assuming there is a floor below this yeah so I am going to need you to roll a slide here alright really 14 apparently and uh, the hellhound does get an opposed perception roll on this well, with an 18 and that 10, I'm not even going to roll to uh, see what it actually gets. But uh, with an 18, that already beats your 14. So you do slide. Uh, however, the Hellhound comes with you. What is on the third floor? You would have to... Well, I guess since you're already there on the third floor. Uh, there is another password and a control node on this side of the password. Um, but as you trigger the hellhound uh for everyone else several things happen at once um akari uh you downstairs uh more or less keeping an eye on the guard room um you see that the guards visibly tense up and begin uh conversing in hushed tones putting hands to their ear as for xavier and airbags uh an alarm doesn't really sound per se but you can take a look at any security guard and see that they're doing much the same thing. They're sort of conversing amongst themselves. Um, they're looking around. Uh, and they're beginning to sort of comb through the crowd looking for uh, presumably someone or something. I whisper to airbags. We have to be prepared for something. And I think we should get ready to book it. Yeah, and we don't really have a way to contact Steel while they're net diving or anything, do we? I mean, if you have an agent, you'd be able to get to him. True. Uh, so, well, Airbags will try that, actually. He'll, like, quickly, like, text us as agent, Steel, they're on to us. One second. Give me, give me one second and I'll get you something. Let me know when the security guard that's watching the place I slipped into goes off, walks off again. Yep, so Airbags will just sort of like, look, look like he's like sorting out the, because uh, I imagine we're wrapping up Glyph's set by now, right? By now, yeah. Yep, so Airbags will just sort of make a show of sort of starting to pack things up and just keep an eye on the security guard up in the corner by steel and uh, say and just send a text saying clear once 
the security guard moves away and it looks like she's got a clear shot out. Okay. I think that definitely will call for a perception check there. Yep. Especially since I'm trying to be sneaky about it. 22. 22. Good news, bad news. Uh, good news, you've got a bead on the security guard. You could probably tell that he's going to sneeze before he's going to do it. Uh, the bad news is that he is so alert right now that uh, he is not only staying where he's at, but he probably is going to be a problem if you want to get steel out of that area. Mm. And if that wasn't bad enough, uh, a timer goes off on your agents that indicates the auction has ended. And uh, the auctioneer sort of picks up a glass, does the tinking thing. And once everybody's attention is on the auctioneer, he says, Well, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, it seems our auction has come to the close. I am honored to present the winning uh, bidder. And he pulls up his agent. And he says, And the winner is... And he starts sounding out the words. But at that point, a gyro uh, roars up on the edge of the terrace. And on this gyro, uh, it has a spinning, already revolving machine gun. And all of you have exactly one turn or one action to react to this. All right. Airbags is going to, like, run in the direction of where the security guard is in the corner and dive dive for cover. Okay. Because uh, I'm assuming it's, like, coming in from, like, the east-southeast of the map? Uh, it is coming from the... Uh, direct east of the map so that sort of long part of the terrace all right so have all of a so sudden yeah, air, airbags will sort of yes airbags will sort of run over in this direction okay xavier what do you like to press up against the gate okay there's probably not enough time for me to go in like I was thinking ta tackling uh, uh, Sierra San to get to get her out of uh, danger. I would say if you want to try for that, I would require an athletics roll. Let's try it because I figure if I can get on the good graces of somebody high in the banking world, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, that is true. I'm going to. Plus, we probably reacted quicker because we're specifically eyes on a swivel at the moment. Right. I'm going to throw three luck into it as well. Okay. So a total of 15. Uh, yes. In fact, what I would say, Xavier, with a 15, you are able to tackle uh, Miss Sun to the ground and not a moment too soon um, because as you do, the gyro. Uh, opens up fire and begins spraying the terrace with a barrage of bullets. Now, uh, you do see that the auctioneer does take a hit in his leg and he goes down. And the overall feeling of this attack is it's, it's a massacre. Um, by the time the security begins firing back at the gyro, um, the auctioneer is down. Most of the guests are injured in some way. Um, airbags, you and the guard next to you are fine. Steel, you had quite a bit of material between you and the gyro, so no problem there. Uh, Xavier and Miss Sun, uh, you are un unharmed as well. However, the security that was next to... Uh, we lost to ELH. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Oh, I hear you. Where did I cut off? Where did I cut off? And I can still hear you. I was gonna say, I can still hear you. Okay, oh, might just fine. be McCall then. Might just be me that cut out. Hello. I All right. So Sorry. the uh, the security guard that was at the edge of the terrace nearest to Miss Sun, uh, he is definitely eviscerated. He is down pretty much dead unless someone were to treat him immediately. So I'm going to give you guys another action to react here before we actually go into combat. Did we say what kind of weapons we had? Um, I think I said that you could conceivably bring anything medium-sized or smaller, so a pistol, uh, a collapsible SMG, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah Bags would have just had his claws. 
speaking speaking of though, uh, while the while security is uh, no doubt distracted by the giant helicopter with the machine gun, mm-hmm. uh, he is going to sort of like hurriedly like get out his agent and sort of text to steal in all caps, get out. Um, I'm going to grab Sierra San and try to make our way back to here where we have more material towards the kitchen bedroom area. Okay. Why don't we have you roll a evasion for me, please? I am going to impose a minus two difficulty because you are trying to bring uh, Sierra San with you. All right. Uh, throwing another luck into this. Okay. A 15. Yeah, you're able to, uh, between the two of you, you're able to get into the more shielded area of the uh, pet house, maybe somewhere about there. And uh, as you sort of get past the elevator, uh, Miss Sun stops you and says... No, 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 no. We we need to go down. We we don't want to be here. Uh, then let's take the stairway here. All right. More cover. So the uh, the security guard that is sort of sitting in that area, uh, he's blocking the door at the moment, and he is very much alert. He's got his pistol drawn. He. He's kind of looking to see whether he should run out or he should continue to guard the stairwell. I'm just going to go up to him and go, We're, we need to get out of here. This is uh, Mrs. Sun. And uh, Miss Sun does sort of flash him a quick smile. And roll me a uh, persuasion on the Xavier. Uh, this is going to be pretty simple because you've got Sun with you. Uh, I'm going to give you a plus six on this. A 16 total. Yeah. Security guard says, oh, right, of course, this way, ma'am. And he steps out of the uh, stairwell and allows you two to depart down the stairwell. Now that just leaves the very sticky position of airbags and steel. Mm. Alright, so I have three net actions still. So Mm -hmm. there is the control node on floor two that I don't know what it is, and there's a control node on floor three. Do I know what this one is? No, you have no idea what this one is either. Uh, and that's a pathfinder to figure out what they are, right? I believe so, yes. Uh, I find the one. Well, you know the one below you is uh, specifically for the uh, access controls, meaning the staircases in the elevator. So it's an additional layer of access that you now have, well, access to. The uh, Unfortunately, with a 12, though, you have no idea what the level 3 um, control node does. You would have to toggle it to find out. Alright. Um, I suppose, that, um, I'm guessing the stairs and elevator thing is, like, currently open and fine. Yeah, at the moment, it is currently open. I will go back up to floor one, use my second note action to unlock all the bedrooms and stuff again, just in case if people need to duck and cover them. Okay, and then you have one final net action. Jack out. Jack out. All right, airbags. Uh, the security officer, or the security that you were nearby, um, he's kind of rising up and taking pot shots at the gyro. Um, he doesn't really seem to be overly concerned with you at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. Airbags is basically just gonna like press himself up against the great as if he's like hiding just to give Steel some cover as she comes back up. Okay. So I will say that it is at this point that the gyro has started to drift around the northern edge of the terrace and is changing the angle at which it's firing. So you could remain where you are, but I would probably say the service yard will ah. give you the <laughs> most cover. All right, so actually, sort of, uh, as he's sort of start to, like, drift around the corner, he'll go, oh, heck, and actually you sort of come squeeze through the grate and sort of hustle steel back in the direction of the service yard. Okay. 
so good news, bad news. Uh, when you guys do manage to get into the service yard, there's just a gate between you and the service access. Uh, there is indeed a... Uh, I think it's called a scaffold, whatever it is, that sort of bucket that uh, window washers ride in. don't remember the name mm -hmm. of it off the top of my head. Point being, uh, there is one of those that both of you could fit in. Um, the bad news is that, judging by the amount of fire, if you don't start going down right now, it's likely you never will. Alright, good enough for me. So airbags all sort of try and bundle steel into it and start just like uh, I don't know, like repelling it down as fast as he dares. Alright. Okay, this is officially insane. So while you all are and, writing that down... And, and he's going to look for like a, like a point somewhere further down that they could potentially hop off. Rather okay. Rather than going all the way down to the ground. Okay. Uh, that has been noted. Uh, we're going to cut to Akari. Akari, you are down uh, downstairs. Uh, what are you doing? All you know that's going on is that the guards are really antsy for some reason. Are they... Are, this, are they still at their posts? They are still at their posts. Okay. Uh, not much I can do then, because there's no way I can take on three guards by myself. I'm just going to see what I can do to find a dry uniform. Okay. It's fairly simple to find one of those. All right. Grab a dry uniform that's roughly my size and go and hide in the ladies' washroom for a few minutes while I'm here. Well, I'm hearing, I'm assuming the building's starting to shake at the moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And best to be prepared, just in case. And not much else I can do at the moment. Um, I can send a quick text upstairs and go, uh, guys, who's shooting? And uh, airbags, oh, no, actually, no, airbags is busy operating in the winch, so. Steel's like the only one not in the middle of doing something. Mm -hmm. Middle of panicking, but yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. So, actually, does does Steel know what's going on exactly? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious when you hear a. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess Steel, you'll be the one to sort of get a carry up to speed. Uh, all hell's breaking loose. Uh, everyone's dying. Co helicopter, machine gun. Mm. Um. Oh, I have a nasty idea. Um, I'm going to quickly text back in short speak. Uh, get guard, uh, call or get guard communication, and call for backup from lower floor, if possible. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Winky face. Smiley face. Gun emoji. Hmm. Airbags is insane as has me trapped in a fucking window washer bucket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd imagine we're already down a floor at this point. Seven. All right, well, I shrug. Well, there goes that avenue of opportunity. Okay, we'll meet by car. Okay. So, uh, airbags, you do have the option, of course, of going all the way down, but there is another terrace about two floors down that you could hop off on. Um, are you going to hop off there, or are you going to go all the way down? Oh, yeah. Hop, hop off there and get back into the building. Okay. So you and Steel are able to get into a elevator or staircase that way. And I'm going to say that you all meet at the bottom floor, uh, mostly intact. Uh, the Really, the only odd thing is that... Oh, i got to do token cleanup here. Uh, really, the only odd thing is that you have in your sort of, not possession, but with you, uh, you do have Miss Sun, who is there as well. And is at this point so, that uh, Miss Sun sort of looks at you all and says, Right, well, uh, I don't really know who you are, nor do I really care at the moment. Uh, do you have a means of escape? Are you the one that bought, are you the one that won the auction, bought the thing? I'm, Honestly, we don't know. They started shooting before the auctioneer made the announcement. I'm fairly <laughs> confident the bid I made was the correct one. We can, uh, before we run, we can escort you to retrieve it. She thinks about it for a moment and says, yes, take me to the server room. 
All right. And then I will take the lead and escort the Miss Sun to the three guards who are outside this office and hope that it's the right office. Okay. So as you approach, uh, they do say, sorry, no entrance permitted. Gentlemen, this is the winner of the server, or of the auction, rather, is she should be here to claim her prize. Roll me a persuasion, please. Okay. This should be hard as hell. Oh, with Not a bad. 15. Uh, you know, they kind of look at one another, weigh their options, and says, uh, right this way then, ma'am. And they open the door, and sure enough, inside there are a few server racks, but the one you're looking at uh, in particular is a red colored uh, server blade that is uh, not attached to anything in a rack. Um, it is just a to to an outside observer, one that has never worked in IT. It just looks like a red computer that's sitting in a rack. Um, but Akari and Xavier, you could look at it and tell that this is a a TMPD server. All right. Is it carry size? Um, I would say it's sort of like a briefcase, if a briefcase was twice its size. So it is a little bit unwieldy, but it is carryable. Alrighty, so <clears throat> I guess I'll have a nod and go, hey, you got your own transport or do you need a lift? And uh, Miss Sun sort of looks you all over and says, I do have my own transport, but if I understand correctly, they are not able to get to me because somebody... I'm guessing you all decided to block the roads into the hotel. I mean, gonna... air, air, airbags will do his best to sort of blink and look nonplussed. Yeah, I wish it was, ma'am. That's probably the helicopter. Probably the f same people who are driving the helicopter, or sorry, driving the gyro up there. As I not, I say that just non-committally as I. Um, me, me and Zav Xavier are busy hauling the server back to Airbags' car. Mm -hmm. So Miss Sun says, I can tell that there's a lot more at play here. I don't think you're behind the gyro, but I think you're behind other things. Tell you what, you let me take a uh, copy of the server, the data on it, and I will pretend I never saw you. Airbags are sort of like, Look, look at the others in a sort of like we okay with the steel expression uh, let me get back to you one second with that and I'll just I'll uh, basically do a if I can just tap in and do a sweep of all like basically do a quick scan of all the data in the server and make sure it's not anything that's like super fucking awful or bad that that like we shouldn't give it okay that uh, that's gonna be a rather difficult interface check but it is possible <laughs> I have I'll, I'll put I'll put my last five luck in it because why not? This is pretty. Yeah, this... Let, let's walk and scan, people. So that's a twenty total. Twenty total. Uh, good news, bad news. Uh, good news is this does contain a lot of information regarding that sort of botched uh, hostage situation. Uh, the bad news is that it contains a lot of at least on the surface because you're not able to get into the nitty gritty. Like you're just doing a cursory scan. The data presented here is not only things like what officers were on duty, uh, what were the frequencies used, what are the upcoming frequencies used. Basically, anyone could take this information and know exactly when and where uh, the TMPD forces were deployed not only that night, but for the next month and a half. <laughs> So once I finish doing that, as we're all running, I'll just uh, turn to Xavier and Miss Son. And be like, um, uh, I think, uh, you, do you, uh, Xavier, you came down here with Son. Did you help her get her out of there? I am the one that got her out of there, out of the situation upstairs. I say we call this, uh, Xavier and us uh, friends saved you, so you should just forget everything that happened and I'll live it by. 
Roll me a uh, persuasion minus two on this one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take it all. Uh, Twenty-two. Well, you got oh, a critical success. A... Wow. That's a 27. Yeah, that's uh, that's very impressive. So Miss Sun, she weighs her options and says, very well, but uh, I want one thing in return. Yes, Miss Sun, and I bow respectfully to her. I want your agent number, specifically you, Xavier. Done. And I give it to her. Very well. I think I can see myself from here. You edge runners have a pleasant evening, or about as pleasant as one can be in current circumstances. You as well. As well. We, we we have had we have had tidier nights. That's true. Hmm. Let's just say you might be hearing from me in the future. And unless and, uh, anyone stops her, she sort of walks away walk. into the night, uh, left to her own devices. Uh, as she for the rest away. of you, um, you are able to. Away. It was just like when she walks away, she was just like looks at the group like, "How did I just fast talk like one of the most influential people?" Uh, well, to be fair, she didn't have any of her security with her, and well, I mean, edge runners always have something hidden up their sleeves, and he'll just sort of like flick out his razor claws to emphasize the point. But we also are seen to her as an asset. She gave us something. Now we will eventually have to repay the favor. And that's Let's how it works, not... folks. Um, so much do we have with this thing? It's bloody heavy. Yes, yeah. sure, sure. And airbags will sort of help lift it. Let's not um, report we'll... into the to the police immediately. Yeah, I'm I'm fine to just not bring up the fact that she was even there. That sounds no, like I a, mean... a fair. I mean, let's not give them this instantly, and I'll tap on the serve. I uh, spotted some interesting stuff, did you? Uh, yeah. I raise an eyebrow. Raise an eyebrow. Oh. Well, you know what's on there, I don't. Alright, I trust it. Well, let's get it back to our place and see what we can figure out about it. Alright. I, I agreed. So there's a short transition period where, of course, since you were the one that set up the getaway plan, you are able to get past the Purple Tiger roadblock. And basically just get to one of the cars we set up on the other side and then zip off. Mm -hmm. And then send a text saying, or to the Tiger saying, all clear. And not a moment too soon, because it's right about then that the uh, police, like the actual police, start trying to get to the scene of the crime. Um, By this point, the gyro has left. But as to the fate of those who are on the terrace, uh, you have no idea. Because yeah, like, uh, I did ask the police to like ignore any traffic jam reports, but you know, it's a little hard to hide gyro shooting up the top of a penthouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we are going to transition back to your apartment. So... Uh, with uh, you all back at your apartment with the server, what's the play here? I'm going to take the time to so thoroughly go. Airbags will, will yeah, airbags will go. Okay, how, how much time do you need to give a proper look over? I don't know. Um, an hour tops? Shouldn't be more than that. Good enough. And airbags will sort of go to his room get get the transponder out of where he's hidden it and then go down take it down to the car pop it in the glove box and then just go for a drive around the city for an hour or two <laughs> i'm gonna go to the local coffee shop and get a coffee to relax for a minute Fair. all right well uh we are sort of at that situation where i'm gonna leave it up to you all um, since we did have to cut last session so- short, this is sort of the continuation of that. Um, we can continue here. It is an option. However, I will say if you want uh, more specific details about what's on the server, um, I would need some time to actually sit down and catalog out what you found because I honestly thought either you weren't going to get the server or you were going to give it away. So, okay. <laughs> so we, I mean, we don't need to just wait well, on that at the very well, least. Is- 
I'm because assuming. Because I imagine, that like, whatever we find out, it's not going to change what we do. We're still going to hand it back over to the police, right? Yes, Eventually. that's. Yeah, it'll get back to them probably by before the day's end. Yeah, I just, basically, Steel just wants to like she's going to give it over. If anything, just wants to make a copy of it all for his, for herself. Okay. I'd suggest trying to find a way to do that without leaving the digital print that you've actually made a copy. Yeah, that too. I mean, give a Netrunner enough time, and if we're pretty sure I can turn this thing into a brick or DDoS bomb, but... <laughs> yeah, just basically as much time as you need to lift a copy and cover your tracks, and then we'll... The airbags will sort of come back and pick you up to drive you to the police station. All right. So let's do this then, uh, in the interests of not only time, but in the interests of wrapping our little adventure here up so that others you know because i am going to try and recruit another player um which hey stream if you're listening we are currently looking for another player uh just shoot me a message on discord or uh if you go on youtube or my twitter there should be a link there just get in touch um, um be, be the next victim of the cyberpunk rpg curse <laughs> yeah that's one way of putting it uh but long story short you are able to return the server after making a copy to the tmpd um, the officer that takes the server uh, promises that he will make sure that uh, your superiors are told of your exploits. Um, but the long-term implications of what just happened is what will remain unseen until next week. So, as I said, that's where we're going to end our session. Again, it is a little short, but uh, that we did sort of end early last time, and this was meant to be a single session. So, I think it's... a. Uh, a significant amount of time but uh yeah this is gonna end the stream yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is where i'm gonna end the stream so uh twitch youtube thank you so much for watching and we'll see these lovely people next week bye stream bye guys